and we're sort of live. Yay! Hi, everybody! Everybody in the chat, let me know if we can actually hear people, because this is only my second time doing tech, and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. And he's doing really, really good. <laughs> he's been practicing fully. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So we're walking down the hall. And welcome to the first episode of Dead Reckoning, where we are pirate people. Rose, take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dead Reckoning. I am Rose, like Steve just said. And this is basically D&D &D with pirates and tentacles and dad jokes and very bad Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonations. True Arr. say. <laughs> Uh, I am your dungeon master for today. Uh, you may recognize me as everyone's favorite potty mouth gang girl from Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, but tonight, I'm going to be bringing you some classic D&D 5e run by yours truly. Um, today's episode is episode one. No title for it yet, but if it was a working title, it's Rose is going to stumble through this as best she possibly can and not have a panic attack. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. Let's start with meeting our players. Uh, players, if we can get your names and your character names, race, and class, would be great. Starting with Steve. Uh, hey, I'm Steve. I'm going to be playing LaForge, the Warforged Cleric of the Forge. And that's a lot of forges. <laughs> so, yeah, it's almost as if I set it up that way. Uh, okay. I, put it, I put it to the internet. And I said, you know, if, if my character's exasperated, should I just put, you know, be like, oh, by the forge, by La Forge, as a homage to, uh, you know, Jordy La Forge? And they were like, yes, do it. And it's like, all right, fine, cool, we're done, we're gonna do that. But does he have a visor? <laughs> well, yeah, I can say like, by La Forge's golden visor. <laughs> Uh, next up is Mike. Hi. Um, everyone might probably not recognize me because I don't go on there all that often, but when I do, I cause a lot of trouble and Steve gets exasperated. So it's worth <laughs> it. Uh, I play Julian Mandrake uh, on the, occasionally on Vampire, uh, excuse me, uh, Vancouver by Night. Um, and uh, I'm a cosplayer of some international uh, infamy, but uh, you can see all that later. We'll talk about it at the end of the show. Uh, I am playing uh, Belen Thunder Fury, no, Thunder Soul, excuse me. Um, a water Genasi, Genasi, uh, going to be a Storm Sorcerer and Tempest Cleric. And Bethany? <laughs> Hi, I'm Bethany. Um, this is my first time <laughs> streaming like this, so excuse me if I get giggly. I am playing we'll uh, Claire and Caster. <laughs> don't, don't start with me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, <laughs> now you're gonna be flabbergasted. <laughs> I yeah, I don't. As... I don't know if our RBG can handle that much bright red that your face just turned. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing. That's why she's against I encourage now. you guys not to play the game How Red Can We Make My Face. <laughs> Next time, I am totally wearing concealer. Anyway, I play Claire and Caster. She is a monk, drunken monk, and you'll find out the rest later. And last but not least, uh, Aaron. Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron. I'm playing a French musketeer slash swashbuckler named Biruno de Cogniac. <laughs> I love the awesome. reference <laughs> so much. It's a great concept. <laughs> uh, and also, since this is kind of a uh, the stream forward anyways, cat! Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'll be accompanied by my cat. She's just sitting on my lap here. Kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> there will, yeah, chances are there's going to be a cat over here, too. <laughs> And there is usually a fifth player. Sadly, she could not join us. Real life does get in the way, uh, unfortunately. But 
We will see her next week, and that is Kelly, but we will again see her next week. All right, let's just jump into this and start with everyone's favorite thing, exposition. Not a lot of it, just enough to get into the setting all set up. All right. So our adventure takes place in the high fantasy world of Omina. A long, long time ago, a meteor was sent to the planet and made a huge crater in the center of the world. This filled with water and became the massive ocean known as Gaia's Pool. This is the actual setting of the area where everything then began to like, you know, matter rose and islands formed. And this actually essentially made up the world that we are playing in today. Uh, normally, the big, huge pirate port that is there, which I've yet to name actually, because I've not gotten to there yet, uh, is usually a big hub of where pirates and sailors and criminals usually tend to go. And that's where, you know, a lot of the action is. But your adventure, unfortunately, does not start there. It starts in the small town of Zenith. Zenith is a port little town that is actually a sort of a farming community. Uh, not a lot of crime there, but from time to time, some shady dealings have had a tendency to go down, mostly because it's a nondescript town and very, very small. No one really pays too much attention to it. And more importantly, the uh, port authority and the uh, nobility tend to not pay attention to that town. So it's a really great place to escape refuge. And this is where your characters will gladly meet. All right, so if I can get each player to roll a d6, please. I will roll one as well. This will determine your starting position. <laughs> Six. Loop, loop. Where's that stupid dice mechanic? There it is. I don't know if that did anything. Yeah, it did. Okay. Yay. <clears throat> All right. Bethany, did you roll? <laughs> oh, right. Forgot we're using the dice along. Uh, yeah, or you can just tell me what you rolled if you rolled a physical dice. Yeah. I rolled a six on my physical dice. Sweet. Okay. I will. Hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> All right. I'm actually going to start bar. with Steven in that case. And Steve. Swell. Yes. Uh, it's the forge. Where would you be at this point in time? Uh, I believe there's a few different odd jobs and stuff that actually happen in town. I'd probably um, be uh, doing one of those odd jobs, like uh, repairing something, like carts and stuff like that for people. Okay. Actually, you were just finishing um, a repair job at a farmstead. Uh, the gentleman is known as George, Farmer George. Everyone just knows him as Farmer George because uh, he's the only one in town named George. And he's a sweet guy who says he would be really grateful if you could rethatch his roofs for his cows. And you had just finished for the day. He Okay, yeah, I was going to say, like, he's aware of my character's weight, right? Like, I weigh about 600 pounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he knows this is going to be a rough job, it's going to be delicate, but this is sort of some heavy-duty work. But he would really use the hand because, well, he's an old guy, so he could really use the hand for sure. Well, yeah. It's not fix like a very flimsy thing. This is this is a barn. This is for his cows. This is for his business. Uh, fix it up and then, you know, head back into town, I suppose. Like, go on awesome. that way. He does pay you for that. Um, he's going to give you, actually, five gold. He's One rather grateful. billion dollars. <laughs> he is going to give five gold for huge amount of gratitude. Money. He's a lucrative guy. He works in milk. You know. Uh, he also asks you to see if you can uh, wheel over a uh, keg of milk uh, to bring to the bar. And uh, bring to... Mike, could you repeat your character's name? Velen. Velen? Or Velen? Velen. Sorry. Velen, oh. Wait, there it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, Velen. To bring to a fellow in a bar named Velen. Um, doesn't give any description, just seems to know that you'll know him when you ask for him at the bar. By LaForge's seasonal beard, it shall be done. Um <laughs> uh, Thank you, yes. As uh as you say there, farewell. <laughs> Okay. got to take out my head. <laughs> it's all good. 
So, so yeah, I'll just are. cart that over to where okay. it needs to go. Okay. Uh, on route there, you go through the main gate of the town. It's your typical cobblestones, fairly cheap thatch houses, roofs. Very high fantasy, very classical, very generic. Um, nothing to descript or anything like that. Um, Bethany, mm -hmm. can you roll me a d20? Just for fun. I got a nine. DM never asks for just fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, secret no world, world of initiative things. <laughs> just in case. Uh, Bethany, you're actually at mm -hmm. one of the stalls and um, someone has also just yelled at you and says, uh, hey, she just stole from my stall. No, I didn't. Uh, I saw you. You took that apple and just walked away with it. What apple? Roll me a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I have any bonuses in that? Um, okay, so I got a 17 plus 2 will make that 19. <laughs> uh, yeah, you hold up your hands and just go, what you just did? No, I didn't. And um, the good news is like, oh. Well, I, I suppose if you just just show the contents of your bag, I'll be fine and I'll I'll move along. Do you do so? I sigh and I grumble and I bit and I grumble and yeah, I do. Uh, you open your bag and lo and behold, uh, there is nothing there. And I'm also gonna roll something off camera as well. Anything of value in there? In my bag? Yes. There's a lot of seashells. He uh, literally grabs a handful and runs for it. Yeah, you just got scammed. <laughs> you murder! I ain't going to collect your fucking family for the rest of your fucking life! Do you, do you pursue? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, LaForge, perception check, please. Uh, alrighty. Uh, perception is on my character sheet somewhere. Uh, where is perception? Yeah, there it is. Twenty-one. Nice. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. So you see all of this go down. You hear the rant of this um, woman, and you see her in hot pursuit. What do you do? Um, uh, like I hear the yelling, obviously. Yeah. Fairly clearly, too, because that was a really good roll. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to move in the way of the person who's running. Yeah, because he's running towards you, making a break for it, and he has not seen you yet. Yeah, I'm just going to sidestep into their way. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say he fails. Uh, he fails his uh, <laughs> dodge because he's not looking where he's going uh, and runs straight into your chest. And he falls and he bumps into you. I suppose you're just holding your ground, I guess. Yeah, I ain't moving. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> um, not gonna make you roll for that. Um, he <laughs> literally bounces off your chest, falls back around his on his butt and just looks up and just like um yeah I'm gonna grab him and bring him over to uh Claire yeah Claire so you see 
Um, can you describe the forge for us? Uh, he's like about close to seven feet. Uh, he's made almost entirely of wood and metal. Uh, he's got like kind of looks like oh, looks almost like porcelain additions. He's got a giant shield and a warhammer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he he looks like he's made of just mechanical bits. And Claire, can you describe yourself? Um, uh, about five foot five. Um, <laughs> brown hair, wearing black clothing. Um, sorry, I'm distracted by the. Oh, yeah, I know. Some idiot outside. has their alarm going off in our neighborhood. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you uh, kidding me? Why does this always happen? <laughs> Can't hear them. But yeah. Good. Um, but yeah, uh, tanner skin, very sun kissed, which has been out in the sun a lot. Um, she looks a little messy, like she slept outside. <laughs> and obviously swearing up a storm, but then sees you with the guy, slows down, looks up, and is like, whoa, hey, um, Thanks for stopping him. I believe this belongs to you. And yes. Just, yeah, I'm holding the guy himself. Like, are you holding him from like like the shirt collar? Kind of just like okay. no, the scruff of the neck. Yes. Okay. My shell, sir. Um, there's also a few uh, that were trailed behind him because he just like really just like grabbed a b- bunch and just ran. <laughs> So he, kind of, them. so he kind of holds out his hand with a bunch of them and just waits for your hand underneath if you're going to catch him. And I'm going to catch they him. Just fall, they just fall in. And he just flicks his hand so they come off if any of them stick to the sweat of his hands because he's guilty. He's 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 fatty. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you for your cooperation. And I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> and he just runs off. <laughs> I could have you hide on the stock for that! Uh, you notice that there is conveniently no law enforcement around. It is that sleepy of a town. I am slightly inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say this out loud? No. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can. <laughs> I can, but I'm not. I'm going to go look back to the for- look forward and be like, thanks! And give him one of my shells. Claire gives you a shell. I put it wherever, like I would have probably like a bandolier pouch. So I'll put it in one of those. Thank you. Welcome. Where are you headed? Into town. Uh, you notice he is carting a uh, a keg of some co- of some sort. Heading to the bar, perhaps. I am. Care to escort a maiden there? Sure. We'll lead the way. <laughs> and he carries on towards the uh, the bar, <laughs> the local watering hole. <laughs> or I'm assuming the Ganassi is pickling himself. <laughs> uh, on that note, uh, we actually head into the bar. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'll uh, like, how big is the barrel of milk? I guess that I'm carrying. Uh, it's literally just a keg. It's yeah, an average size, average size cake. Throw that over my shoulder and bring it in. Cool. Okay. Well, first, we're gonna have, go into the bar where Velen. What are you up to? What would you Rain like to be bar. up to? Cool. Rain in the bar. And, and you're behind the bar. Side of the bar over there. It's pressed to digitation. <laughs> Sorry, is that? <laughs> I'm doing the whole Mickey Mouse. A sorcerer's Apprentice thing, and cleaning the bar with my prestidigitation. Oh, nice. And sort of cleaning uh, out mugs. Andy. 
varying folks of varying genders and orientations are watching and are kind of bedazzled by it. Well, the um, fact that I also have blue skin is probably just a... Actually, at this point, it's a minor yeah. thing because everybody knows me. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Birno, where are you at? I'm at the bar, nursing a beer, <clears throat> while muttering profanities about a certain Viscount Belvere. <laughs> um, Mike, I'm going to make you do a perception check. Perception check. Yeah. And I guess, Aaron, um, how, uh, or rather, beer, no, how many uh, drinks in are you, and uh, yeah. how loud Sorry. are you muttering? Sank beers in. <laughs> sank beers in? <laughs> sank. I have sank, sank beers. <laughs> we are counting in... And muttering loudly. We are counting in French, everybody. All right, sorry, I was set on the wrong thing. No worries. Yeah, I, think I, again? I think I may have accidentally rolled with advantage last I time. I think both you did. You did uh, the the character sheets have a, a toggle at the, the top where the gear is. Oh, where the gear is. Okay. Yep. Click on the gear. Um, and then the third column, the one on the right, uh, the second entry down says roll queries. It's a drop down menu. Click on always roll advantage and toggle it to advantage to toggle. And that'll give us the option. Sorry, that was always roll advantage. And, and what was the second one? Uh, advantage toggle. Oh, okay. There it is. And that'll pop up your options. Thanks. Oh. So that should help. And then we turn it off with the gear, oh, or was... how do we get out of that? And then we just click on core, and it pops you out into your character sheet again. Oh, okay. Perception. And For the record, we're using uh, Roll20. We're also on. learning Roll20, because I don't <laughs> like it. But we use it, and I rarely use the maps. <laughs> so, somehow I managed to get lower than my passive perception. That's okay. Uh, Birno is, as we've established, uh, Sank, which is five beers in, and he is muttering loudly. Um, you don't hear exactly what you're saying, but you see a very upset uh, gentleman with a rather, dare I describe, Aaron, a pretty profound proboscis, if you will. <laughs> Feel free to describe Birno for us, Aaron. You're do you probably do a better job than I can. Ah, oh, yes. A French musketeer, bleary-eyed and drunk out of his mind, uh, with the largest nose you've ever seen on a human. And you've seen oh. a lot of humans, Mike. I mean... It's your job. <laughs> and he's at the bar. I'll just slide another one over to him when I see his drink is getting low. Saying stuff like, uh-huh, yeah, that's that sounds like it's terrible. Uh, describe your character, Mike, just so he knows. Just so we all um, know, Poofy shirt, pirate-ish in a way, sort of like the, the, the pirate chic uh, uh, sash, the, the shirt. Uh, the most notable thing about him is the fact that his skin is blue. Um and has always a little bit of a sheen as though he just got out of the shower. Almost looks just on the just on the touch of wet because he's a water genasi, so he's basically completely affinity. Um, nice and pretty. Generally smiling, but uh, often basically more paying attention to everything than not. Uh, mm -hmm. No, oh, Birnell, someone just uh, slid you another, another, as it were. <laughs> Slight aside, if we get up to uh, 25 subscription points, we're going to actually make Mike put all the makeup on for blue skin. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, please. <laughs> the number of subscription points we get will scale uh, how much blue skin I actually do. I will tinge it if we get <laughs> enough, and then the more subscriptions we get, the more blue skin, and the more complete this costume will be. Ah, uh, and that being the case then, so the, you know, the more blue he is, the more he has to prove it, so that will mean a shirt will come off or two. Maybe. Ah, oh, dang. 
Don't hold me to that, folks. Anyways, carrying on. Yes, beer knows. Uh, this gentleman uh, behind the bar just slid you another beer. Yeah, so so, so accept it, give him a friendly nod, and, and then start downing it. No fruitful conversation? Okay, wonderful. And then, and then waiting <laughs> for him to keep oh, mumbling. Him too. <laughs> they always talk to me, so I'm just listening and waiting for him to mumble again. Mm. <laughs> No, favorite for favorite. So, so, so I buy him a beer too. Nah, I'm the bartender. I don't need it. Thanks, though. Tap, tap. Yeah, bartenders uh, do shots. Don't you know anything? <laughs> lady troubles? <laughs> I mean, it's always women. Am I right? This is only the most beautiful women. <laughs> Precious Roxanne. Naturally. But they're going to try and marry her off to this horrible Viscount Belvere. Yep. I'm going to yep, stop this wedding. Way. <laughs> You're going to stop the wedding? I have a plan. There's invitations given out to everybody. I'm going to collect one and storm the castle. And... Who are you going to get the invitation from? I already have one. I'm kind of nobility myself. Oh, well. That should be no problem. Yes, I just don't know how to end to get out of the castle after I deal with Velbert. My plan's not yet thought through. I'm going to need more beers. Well, this was, this was a good start. I'd slide him another one. And I keep drinking. It's at that point where the door opens and LaForge steps through. Uh, LaForge With ducks through? Yeah, ducks <laughs> under and through, steps in. Yeah, yeah. Keg on his shoulder and all. I'd know LaForge. You've seen him around. You don't know him by name, per se, but you've seen him around. I definitely don't patronize this establishment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so much cat so much cat <laughs> uh, and Claire you're just behind as well Claire oh. you know Velen Yo. very well come to pay your tab uh, do you accept she so <laughs> <laughs> how much is the tab oh. Again. Oh. Roll me a d4. Give me a minute. I'll try to figure it out. Uh, Claire, it's been a Claire roll months. me a d4. Sorry. Is this going to be in hundreds? <laughs> I rolled a one. It's been a couple of months. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure the boss isn't the kind that would necessarily charge interest, but... Uh, I mean, since it's a month and we're going to go with that knowledge, uh, yeah, that one's actually a 100 gold. <laughs> 100 gold? <laughs> That's an insane hey, amount of You gave yourself alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> That's an insane amount of alcohol. This is Claire. <laughs> That's a lot. Would, I, would I be able to have that, like, in notes or bars on me? Like in a bank? 100 gold? Holy shit. <laughs> Um, I will definitely say you have also been trying to work it off as well. I'm willing to actually, actually, I can probably knock it down to like 50 in that case then. It's 50 gold that 50? you owe. Yeah, they're not too, they're not going to harp on you for 50, but they will harp on you for like, you know what, even 25. Let's go 25. You 25? owe 25. That makes, that makes a bit more sense. <laughs> it's a bit shit. gentler. But at That's the same time, gentle. at the same time though, too, you can also work it off. Uh, you have been. It's now 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 at twenty five. <laughs> I don't feel like working anymore. I feel like drinking. So I will take my coin purse out of my top, drop it on the counter, and be like, "There you go. Now pour me a beer." Who are you, and what have you done with Claire? That sounds like it actually has coins in it. It does. Where'd you get them, Daddy? <laughs> Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> Pour him out. 
slide a couple of gold away, push the rest back towards her. Toss a little bit. <laughs> Here is milk from Farber George. Uh, thanks. You never come in here. I have no need of drink. Hmm. But you should try it, though. Here, let me pour you one. Do you have oil? Uh, cooking oil? That would work in a pinch. Do you want to drink cooking oil? I do not wish to drink it. Uh, if you like, Velen, you can do a uh, insight check. You're getting the feeling if he's asking for cooking oil, he's not human, but like, if you want to take a further look, it's up to you. Ooh, my massive insight. <laughs> Watch this, natural ones. 11. A lot of 11s for, a lot of 11s for tonight. Uh, yeah, you definitely get the impression he is not human, not maybe organic as well. I mean... Uh, and he did just tell you that cooking oil will work in a pinch. Who drinks that? <laughs> I don't know. She eats raw fish. What am I going to judge for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Sure, I'll see if I can find you something. I'd have to go back to a storeroom. Make sure she doesn't drink the bar down. <laughs> I would not. Understood. Yeah, 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 you tried before. I would challenge I, do that. Yeah. Thank you very much. And then LaForge goes in behind the bar and <laughs> stands nice. there. This dude's uh, as lawful as the day is long. <clears throat> Love it. Wow. Claire, do you take a seat at the bar? Yeah, I take a seat at the bar. Okay. I mean, I guess I'll come up with some kind of pot of the cooking oil of the region? <laughs> some kind of corn byproduct or something? Depends on if we're tropical, we could do oil or uh, uh, olive I'm assuming it's mo right. it's it's still like kind of hot for a human to handle so he's probably got it like like he's probably got mitts or yeah. cloths or something like that for sure absolutely I would just uh, it is not even cooking with it it's just oil then I just grab it and I start drinking it <laughs> <laughs> probably exactly the way you're drinking that mug right now <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. And he still stands there. <laughs> You're I welcome. I really hope that's the strangest thing I see today. She says as the bar is still being cleaned when I walked out of the room. <laughs> no, she's probably used to that. She's uh, frequented this bar. That's fair. Um, oh, yeah, I am. Huh. Huh. Uh, someone then also bursts into the door. Um, hey, we got wearing... organized in a tavern. <laughs> You're all Maybe here. Dungeons and Dragons. I am legitimately <laughs> expecting a bar brawl to break out. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Me too. I mean, what? Um, the snooty individual, <laughs> a snooty looking individual in some uh, garments that uh, actually, Claire, you recognize. Oh, no. Uh, actually, Claire, sort of out of character, uh, what is your character's title? This is um, out of character, you guys, sorry. <laughs> Since her, it's her dad who owns the title, I don't think she necessarily has a title. She so will just be called Lady. Okay. But her dad is the Merchant Baron. So yeah, very snooty individual, very well-dressed. Um, clearly has nobility regalia on him, uh, looks around in a huff, sees you and goes, oh, milady, milady, there you are. Oh, I thought I lost you. No, oh, you can't escape me. Oh, your father hired me to keep you around to make sure that you don't get lost. 
I'm well, not yeah. gonna get lost. What are you doing in such a very disgusting hey, little hey, dive of this hey, place? Hey, hey. What? Fancy pants. What? <laughs> are you referring to me? You drinking? <laughs> Yes, but certainly not the, the swill you sell at this establishment. Uh, then you can leave. Yeah, get out. Yeah, I stopped drinking at that point. Like, Yes, not without Miss Claire. Uh, you can wait for me outside until I'm done. Your father insists that he see you immediately, young lady. You, you paying her tab? How much is it? 100 gold. Hundred, <laughs> my lady. <laughs> what can I say? They challenged me to a drinking contest, and I won. But, but, but he literally looks like he's gonna like snap in two. Uh, he's not sure how to process this new information. Uh, but, but, uh, um. I do not believe you are supposed to pay for drinks if you are in a drinking contest. This was a special drink. Oh. And Fancy Pants is still kind of bewildered. Just like, <laughs> never mind all that. <laughs> you... Hey. Drink. My father would take care of the, of the bill just fine. You'll have to take my word for it. In the meantime, she is supposed to come with me. Uh, are you paying her tab? <laughs> Again, it will be taken care of. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. By sakes. you? Uh, he ruffles through his pouch and through his, uh, uh, as uh, some Disney characters refer to as bushel britches, and uh, pulls out a uh, bag of gold. And uh, it's a small bag. And he tosses it on the counter. What's it weigh? It weighs about 50. Okay, this will do for a start. It weighs uh, uh, 50 and it? gold, though. I'm not going to look at it. <laughs> Are you drinking? No, but Miss Claire is coming with me out. now. I grab my drink. It's tabulatory. I grab my drink. I chug it. Well, I'm gently customer. on the she counter. <laughs> And it's like, no, no, I gotta go. So I'd rather punch him in the face. But I gotta go. I'll be back. Keep my seat warm. <laughs> Are you in need of assistance? I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I like you too. And he still hasn't moved from being behind the bar. Uh. All right, Mr. Fancy Pants, shall we go? You're giving me a headache. It's at this point that someone, for your sake, either where they read your mind or anything like that, uh, as Fancy Pants turns around, he gets slugged right in the face, falls to the ground. Is he in need of assistance? <laughs> <laughs> he is. Is he conscious? Uh, you uh, go to check. Uh, I forget. Is there a medicine check in this one? Uh, yes. Claire, do you want to go and do a medicine check for me? However, that is. I rolled a nine. <laughs> you think he's okay? He's but breathing. Is he, he's he's breathing, breathing, but is he conscious? Is he a class? No. Like hello. Oh, he's definitely on, he's up. definitely out like a light. Like his. Oh, he's out like a light. Okay, I sit back down at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah. guy who punched him just looks at all y'all, and just like, yeah, he annoyed the fuck out of me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more drink, but then I gotta go. <laughs> uh, set. <laughs> Well, I need to throw out the trash now. Are you in and need I mean, of assistance? I mean, <laughs> that, and I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, like, that's just happened. Reveal has just happened. <laughs> I'm bottling that away for later. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, kind of so a little assume... disappointed in her, actually. She's trailed up the tab for three months and hasn't paid a single dime of it. <laughs> you know, Daddy Warbucks. I mean, if you want to, the, the body is limp. He might have more pouches of gold no, on him. That would be unscrupulous. <laughs> honorable and noble establishment. Anyone could. <laughs> you know what? That's actually a good idea. I'm actually going to see if he has any more of my dad's money on him. He does. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Honestly, enough, pay to pay for, enough to pay for the tab and a few more. <laughs> I pay off the tab. What's in the pouch that he gave me? Uh, it was 50 copper. That bastard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He literally just grabbed the first pouch and just threw it to you. He wasn't even going to bother checking. But, like, he definitely has a bigger pouch of just, like, at least, I want to say at least 150, maybe 200. Who carries that? We, no one has got a bank around here. And it's a small town. Who's going to do shit? <laughs> well. So where are the guards, then? That's town a good guard? question. No, the know. guards said Fancy Pants would have showed up with. He showed up with none. Uh, yeah, he was stupid. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, I uh, after I finish my drink and pay off my tab, I will grab my spell, my I'll grab a seat, uh, something out of my bag and will run it under his nose and be like, "Okay, wake up." <laughs> oh, thank goodness! Was I out? Why am I on the ground? I pat him on the cheek and I was like, "Yeah, no, come on, let's go." <laughs> All right, wonderful. He pays no attention to anybody else and uh, heads out of the door. I'll be back. <laughs> Are you in need of assistance? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not in need of assistance, but if you want to tag along, feel free. It might be entertaining for you to see some family drama. Also, I would freak my dad out if I showed up with you. <laughs> but up to you. <laughs> You being racist? I'm not sure. <laughs> what just happened? Here? I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> All right, LaForge is tailing along. Cool. Uh, it is getting close to closing time, though. If um, Velen wants to join, Birno as well. Hey, Berino, you uh, might want to tag along with these ones. They, uh, they may know a way out of the castle oh, with, for you and your uh, prize. Well, they all look to be aristocrats with fancy pants. And where I come from, we would just guillotine those people. <laughs> but yes, but you need a way out of the castle, you said. Oh, right. That's a good point. Yeah, maybe I'll go see where they're going then. Exactly. I mean... I'll, I'll follow them. How many different possible kinds of castle are there? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> all right. Yeah, so, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll follow along then. All right. So a lot of you are going through the town square. Uh, led by Claire and Fancy Pants, who is rattling on about how irresponsible Claire is, how uh, dangerous it is for a young lady to be blah, 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 doing this stuff and that stuff. Uh, Claire, you've heard it all before. Yeah. Uh, the rest of you hearing this is just like, a few things come up and you're just like, wait, Claire did that? And then... <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Uh, and you I get to, <laughs> uh, and you get to a very nice looking residence. Again, the uh, emblem of a royal family lineage is uh, on it, and also it's quite a bit bigger, and quite far away from the bar and the rest of the little town there. It's also very very nicely built. Um, stone masonry, 
the set of stairs leads to an oak door that, uh, without his hesitation, uh, Fancy Pants walks up of as if he owns the place. He doesn't, but he feels like he does. Well, come along. I'm coming. Fuck. Uh, assume the rest of you are tailing along. Yes. Yes. Uh, yep. Oh sure. Let's follow. Uh, <laughs> you're barely at the you're barely at the door and clearing the uh, top landing of the stairs. Uh, when you see a very robust looking figure, um, actually Claire, if you'd like to describe what your father looks like. Um, he is tall, six foot. Um, he also is a little tanned, some kiss skin cause he's, uh, he, he sails, but he's more, of uh, like clean. He's very clean. Um, he, he has, has round his, ears. yeah, round ears. He's human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has uh, green eyes and very light brown hair that seems to be going gray. And uh, very noble clothes, and he likes to wear blue color. He doesn't seem worried at all as much as Fancy Pants was making it out to be, and sees you and the group of friends there and is a little confused as to the why the rest are there and kind of rolls his eyes at Fancy Pants and just like, I t- told you to look for my daughter, not for, um, who are you guys? And um, to everyone, to not to everyone's surprise, uh, Fancy Pants turns around just as a look like, ooh. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, Dad, just, these are my fancy, friends from the bar. Fancy pants, just, just, just get lost. Just go do something, okay? Anything, I don't care. I'm That's sorry, dar- about that, darling. Fancy pants. It's his name now. Fancy pants is fancy pants. <laughs> <laughs> he does have fancy pants. He does. Sorry, Claire, you were saying. Go ahead. Uh, I was saying that these are just my friends from the bar. Uh, though the. <laughs> I am sorry, this is going to sound very rude. The one who's blue uh, owns the establishment, actually. He and I are very acquainted. Uh, Velen? Ah, uh, Velen, yes, the uh, barkeep. Um, I'm almost afraid to ask, how much is the tab? I, I paid it off, Dad. You did? I believe yeah. 100 gold is what was said. <clears throat> Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Hopefully it didn't cost me a thing. <laughs> All right, no, then. That's it. Even better. Anyway. Um, yes, no, I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit later, but I didn't want to interrupt your plans. But um, no, it seems we've been in, invited to a, a wedding in a, one of the nearby islands. Uh, I'm wondering, um, is this something you want to go to? I, I nudge, I nudge uh, Birino. Mm-hmm. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Told you they'd know. Who's getting hit? Uh, Beer knows getting nudged. I think they're behind you, huh? though. So unless you do a perception check, if you want to, you can always see what they're goofing off about. Oh, no, I'm not paying attention to them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, he, I'm not. He, uh, your dad pulls out a, um, like, um, seal up envelope that's been the seal's been broken and it's fancy writing and it's just like uh the wedding of um uh roxanne and uh the name of the groom aaron remind me uh viscount valver uh viscount valver i just realized that half of the party are drunkards It just dawned on me now. I just was like, wait a minute. You also note something. I'm going to say also, Claire, you note something written on the bottom that says something about a, a, an open bar and um, somehow sounds a bit interesting to you somewhat. Well, one of the members of the party can't even get drunk. <laughs> we'll work on that. I, I, I take the invitation, I look at it, I think, and I'm just like, I don't really. I have nothing better to do. 
I don't really want to, but since you're asking, yes, I'll go. Um, I would go myself, darling, but you know I have a lot of work to do, and I have oh, I know. ships to take care of. Are you in need of assistance? Uh, I would not be, but um, what was your name? Uh, very tall, sir? LaForge. LaForge. If you could do me the um, do me a great honor, and you will be reimbursed, uh, but if you could escort my daughter and anyone who wishes to go to this event as well, um, that would be most wonderful if you could. 100 gold. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do better. It will. Also, I will also take care of provisions as well. Uh, and he gives you uh, 100... He actually, LaForge, gives you uh, the 100 gold plus another 100. So you have 200 gold in your possession in a nice big uh, hearty sack for you. Uh, he also gives you... Um, a writ that has the name of a ship uh, written on it. Uh, it says uh, the individuals uh, carrying this writ are to um, board the, um, the the name of the ship, which I've yet to come up with as well, <laughs> um, and board that. He says that will get you on one of my ships, um, but you have that. Um, please return it, you know, as soon as you are able, as soon as the event is done. Any, de any delays or anything like that, I'll understand, but this will get you on board. The Cyrano uh, de Bergerac? Kind of a name of a <laughs> ship is that? <laughs> Actually, I decided the uh, ship's name is called the Moliere. Moliere. My favorite boat. Uh, any issues, I'm sure, Claire, you you know the drill at this point. You know, it's, yep. the Port Authority is really annoying, and they require this writ. Everything was, f I would have just given you a ship just willingly, but the Port Authority and the nobility and monarchy requires me to um, send it in there. So, uh, if necessary, you have your way to this island and off this island. And the island um, that is happening, by the way, Claire, with the invitation that you have, uh, mm. is the island of Frontenac, which, by the way, is based mm. off of uh, Chateau Frontenac, which is in Quebec. <laughs> nice. One of my favorite hotels. It's very old castle and I love it. Um, now, basically based off of that. Anyway. Dad. Yes. Question. Yes, you will be required to wear a dress. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Are you sure I can't steal brother's other hand-me-down coat? <laughs> oh, I mean, hold on. He takes the he takes the invitation, takes a look. Fancy dress required. <laughs> Says fancy dress. Doesn't say what else. You don't have to wear the dress. Sure. <laughs> Shall cool. I provision the rest of your companions as well? I or what? You. <laughs> What's going well, on? I assume you're her escorts. I would require the fanciest of pants. <laughs> Done, my good man. <laughs> and he does take a look. He does take one look at Barino and just like, mm -hmm. I mean, you seem pretty spiffed up. It's my sheepskin leather dueling gloves. <laughs> yeah, you look very, very expensive. Okay, you good. Um... What's going um, on? Velen, um... Oh, uh, I assume you're escorting as, um... My daughter's plus one. Excuse me? And two and three. For what? Are you coming to this wedding with me or not? What wedding? This wedding. I believe a woman just asked you to go to a event with her. I'm... I believe you are now going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, he is what? not getting married. Viscount is getting married on an island. I'm invited to go. Oh, wait. Serenos Viscount. Yes. Baronos Viscount. Yes. Okay. Uh, what's that got to do with me? Would you like to escort me? And get married. Why? You're going? Yes. 
Somebody from my Why? family has to go. My dad is busy because it's peak trading season. My brother's busy because he's helping my dad. My sister is off at the summer house. So I'm here. I'm going. I'm noting all of these things, by the way. <laughs> and we're supposed to... I turned to her father. We're supposed to babysit her? I mean, you have a very good idea of what she seems like when she's out, when she's supposed to be cut off. I could... She drinks like a sailor. <laughs> I'm aware of this. I got lucky with one daughter. I didn't get lucky with the other one. Meaning, I as in, I got that... lucky with having one lady. I have a sailor for a second one. Why I would love you, you dearest. that one? when you could send the other one. The other one's in the summer home and another region, unfortunately. And she won't be able to make it in time. I mean, you could always not oh, yes. go. Um, I believe I'll have a very, very heavy pocket with this 200 gold that I'm willing to offer for uh, improving the bar and covering Each. any costs while you're gone. I mean, for you and your bar, per se. Um, your friend Birano, I could probably outfit with something tad more upscale for the event. In fact, I could outfit all of you as well. Oh. LaForge might be a daughter. little tricky because he wants the fanciest of pants as <clears throat> well as he's a little bit on the, I'm sorry, my friend, a larger scale. Man, they're just passing judgment on you all over the place, aren't they? <laughs> Unacceptable. Hmm. <laughs> 200 gold. The escort Miss Drinks a lot. <laughs> wow, that's Some fancy thing. wedding. That Baron wants to break up. And LaForge gets a pair of fancy pants, and I get 200 gold. And outfitted with the outf and outfitted with a uh, and a fancy suit. Outfits. Yeah. And I get one hundred gold. And a hundred. <laughs> and all the forge gets two hundred right off the bat. So far, two of you will have a hundred, or sorry, two of you will have two hundred gold. Yeah. I look at Birno like, do you not want two hundred gold? <laughs> <laughs> but he's going for love. And 200 gold. <laughs> oh, for pity's sake. He gives, he offers another 200 for beer. No, uh, offers to outfit everybody at no issue and extra cost. And anything that we require for the trip is fine. Kind of rolls his eyes at the inconvenience. Just like how, uh, how long is this going to take? When is this wedding? Uh, I believe it is the, uh, day after the next one. It's the end of the day of this. It's the end of the day today. Um, if you head out tomorrow morning, you get there by evening. Uh, the you get there by evening. Yeah, it's one day sailing, and then it's the day after. Two days. Turn to Birano. You didn't give this a lot of time, did you? <laughs> you have a plan? <laughs> How are we going to get around it? Probably. I don't know, but we're going to figure it out when we get there. <laughs> Beer no definitely takes a page out of my book for sure because this is essentially all you guys. So <laughs> this this plan is sufficient. This, this this is the backup plan. I was trying to convince this kid Christian to to, to break this thing up before and I would do all the writing and tell him what to say, but he was a complete dunce. It's it's now we're on to the backup plan. <laughs> Uh, yes, and also I would be willing to let you stay in the villa for um, for the evening. That way you're all together and I can get you all leaving at the same time. No delays whatsoever. Any delays will make it uh, a bit inconvenient for the wedding party. Okay. And no one's going to bat an eyelash that... Uh... A giant man machine 
uh, and myself are escorting you have no fins I do not have eyelashes well now who's passing judgment no no I'm just sort of getting the lay of the land here so I outfit you properly and you all are basically escorts to my daughter they'll understand okay I'm sorry Claire you have a bit of a reputation that's I built it I mean, she has been working off her tab. As far as I could tell, she's worked it off. <laughs> After the 200 gold. <laughs> wow, you are really on this gold thing. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> worked it off. Okay, um, literally, this is a simple yes or no. You're, I mean... <laughs> Sure. I got wonderful. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So up front, he gives everyone their share. LaForge has gotten his. Um, Cyrano gets, or sorry, I keep saying it. Birino gets his. This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and each of you gets escorted in, and you are suited up and fitted out with um, either something within that's already existing or a tailor measures you up. Um, I believe LaForge, you do get measured uh, for some of the for some kind of fanciest thing and a tailor is is very confused as to why it's just a pair of pants but at the end of the day he's just like it's fine. <laughs> you need a bow tie for him too though. A bow tie. Oh dear. Um, I would also like a bow tie. Uh, he gets a he gets the ladder and uh, climbs up and uh, just does the measurement around your neck. Shouts down to an assistant. Um, yeah, it's a sixty-five. Okay, thank you. So, so am I picturing this right? We, we now have a Chippendales golem. Is that what? Is that what's going on? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey. <laughs> Val, Valdrianeth, thank you for the raid. Woo. Oh, yay. Thanks, guys. Woo, We're raiding a pirate party. <laughs> uh, all right. So you spend the night in the villa. Anything you guys like to do? Anything at all? Well, I am raiding my brother's closet for the clothes. Because be damned if I'm going to wear a skirt. Um, technically, that would have been taken care of uh, when everyone else is getting outfitted. So, yeah, you would have raided your um, brother's wardrobe, probably made a mess of his room while you're at it. Um, well, I made a mess of his closet. The rest of his room fine. Yeah. Um, what do you find for yourself? Describe it to me. Let me know. Uh, I would have taken three of his linen shirts. Uh, I would have taken two vests, uh, one in blue, one in probably green. Uh, then I would have taken his old sailing jacket that had a rip in the shoulder seam that was easily fixable, but he didn't want to wear it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, Birno, could you do me a, um, just a perception check? Sure. Mm -hmm. And to respond to the chat, yes, Chippendales Gollum, my <laughs> my Warforge Ooh, okay. cleric of the forge, now has the fanciest of pants and a bow tie. As you're looking around the uh, villa, uh, you do see a very nice like your hat's fine, but you see a very nice looking black leather uh, musketeer style hat with uh, quite a few colored plumes in there that does catch your eye. It looks fairly fancy, and you feel would really look fetching with what you have. Ooh, plumes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just lying there. Wait, sorry, where is it? Um, as you're getting fitted, you're like in the main sort of like study area, um, but you happen to see this very nice looking hat, just. So it's in the general dressing room, so it's, 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 sounds like fair game, all right. Yeah. I'll just go put it on then. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, you look Corruption back in the glass, the and um, you find yourself quite fetching. Uh, if anything, the hat brim is large enough that it kind of does justice to the large nose. In fact, it does make it seem kind of regular in comparison. As I'm aware that that may be a sore spot for this character that you're referencing. <laughs> it is and it isn't, though. I mean, I like to kind of thumb my nose at people. And, and <laughs> just take like a little bit longer than everybody else. I am. <laughs> Why dare you to say that to his character? I dare you. And in moving <laughs> said nose, he's built up like the sturdiest of thumbs. By the way, I go with the hat. Uh, the cool hat sounds cool. Cool. It's yours now. <laughs> <laughs> Just add that to my character sheet, then. <laughs> yeah, just throw it on there. It's a fancy hat. <laughs> right. Fancy-ass hat. Ooh, fancy hat. Um, each of you is shown to you uh, a guest room of some kind. Claire, you have, you know, your own room. Yep. Um, LaForge, uh, they're just like, um, in your room? And it's like the biggest guest room they could find everything like the bed's regular size unfortunately just if 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 you so choose i do very I... well okay thanks <laughs> yeah i just sit down on the bed and i just turn like go into sleep mode <laughs> hmm. all right uh yeah and night begins. Um... And that's I when the dragon seen... attacked. <laughs> oh, that's where I just have my own little thing for folks. I'm only going to letter to the dragon thing. I think they're in here. <laughs> hey guys, I've got about 15 more minutes here, and then I'll be uh, out of time, unfortunately. Oh, sorry, Aaron. That was is that hmm? out of character for you? Oh yes, yeah. Sorry, out of character. I got about fifteen more minutes, and then I'll be. Uh, I'll have to get going. Okay. All right. Uh, in that case, I think we'll just uh, wrap up. In this case, it's a very good slow introductory game. I think things will pick up. I have something now for next game. <laughs> Perfect. Um. All right. Everyone, mm -hmm. just roll a d4 for me, please. D4. I got three. Okay. I got a one. Quattro. <laughs> All right. Uh, Birno and... And uh, Velen. The two of you hear something outside the door, and it sounds like a finger scratch. It's quite noisy. I'm just trying to get your attention. Oh, well, get up and put some pants on, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would assume you had like Wait, a shift a or a room. shirt. There uh -huh. you go. Yeah, yep. check the door. It's a big villa. In separate rooms so where we both hear scratch. Okay. Um... I'm just turning right. in turn order. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Yeah, I assume it had like um like your like you know, like shirts or night shirts or at least something on. Um yeah, beer no you throw on a pair of pants and uh, just barefoot slapping along concrete. Uh two of you open your door um kind of at the same time ish. And perception checks, both of you. Fourteen. Mine roll. Yeah, comes through with twenty-three for you. Okay, there's nothing in front of either your doors, um, but um, Velen, you're the first one to notice. Uh, you do see a light escape around the corner, 
and it's down the corridor past where Beer Nose room is. So he's you guys are across from each other, but further down the hallway. Um hmm. Beer no, you catch the look of um or catch where uh Velen's looking and just look down the hallway as well. And there's a big huge uh glass window with the moonlight flooding in. Um but you do see catch a glimpse of the white sort of like trail of something going down around the corner. Pursue. Cool. Yep, chase after it. Um Claire, you said you rolled Three. Three? Uh, you hear the same thing. It's like a scratching, a finger scratching at the door. Okay. I'm a little bit more cautious, so I would have grabbed my hatchet and would have opened the door slowly and peeked. You see nothing outside the front of your door. Okay, I open the door wider and peek out into the hall. Perception check. Okay, perception check. Oh, what gonna work? Decent at this. Perception. Uh, okay, ten total, so not as great. <laughs> okay, uh, you don't really see or hear anything, but again, similar thing. Um, you're on the... S- your guests' room are on the on like the topmost floor. Uh, you're on the second floor, and you do see it kind of going down the staircase. You're close to the staircase. Okay, with hatchet. A, it's a trail with of something. With hatchet in hand, I tighten my house robe and go after it. Okay, fairly at like a regular speed. Yeah. Cool. I'm a dash. Um, and the forge. Uh, you are awakened by also a scratching noise uh, at your door. And I, and I know for a fact that you are actually on the uh, the first floor, ground floor. It's a cat, isn't it? It is a cat, no. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> a smoky kitty. Uh, tradition here, I, every time I see Steve's cat, I go, smoky kitty. So, yeah. take a drink. Um, yeah. What do you do, LaForge? Um, I initiate my startup sequence. <laughs> Three Windows hours later, no, okay. <laughs> um, moments, moments later. Um, I assume you head to your door. Yes. Open it. Uh, yes. Nothing is in front of it, but perception check. There's a perception check in front of it, like the physical manifestation <laughs> of a perception of check. <laughs> No. I love my players, you guys. This is most curious. <laughs> Sir. Sir. Oh, bam. 17. Take that. Cool. Uh, you hear sort of a uh, giggling, laughing sound. Um, it's neither a child's, um, but it's nothing ghostly or creepy either. It's just as if, like, say, some sort of middle-aged womanly like laugh of some kind like not even at you it's just playful uh and it from what you get the general lay of the house from what you saw uh it's heading towards the uh front foyer hmm fascinating i follow uh funnily enough each of your characters actually does meet and goes down a large staircase as um four individual sort of like spirit balls of some kind go through the door, through the front door. How close are they? Uh, they're several feet ahead. They're How several feet? feet ahead. They're several feet ahead. Um, How many feet? Are they within 15 feet? I want to say at least 25. Damn it. Yeah. Nothing for you to do anything physically to them, and they're quite rapid as well. You all meet each other in the foyer. So basically, we have these four glowing balls that go. Yep, and they just meet each other, and they go through the door. And they go out through the door, and have just disappeared, and you all run into each other. Yeah. Yeah, this is a trap. <laughs> well, be prepared because something's intru- in- intruding on my territory, and I don't like it. I go for the door where the spirit orbs went through. This does not appear to be a trap. 
This appears to be a foyer. <laughs> I mean, y'all think it's a trap? I call it a plot hook? Okay, then. <laughs> I'm heading towards the door, half uh, in hand. I'm not really staring at my house, but kind of. Hey, we're not being paid to protect you here. <laughs> That's fine. You can stay here. This is my house, my territory. I am not expecting anything invading it. All right. Let's see. What should I do? Eh, I ready my shield and warhammer and follow. Are you in need of assistance? Yes. <laughs> uh, Claire, do you open the door? I open the door. Uh, the door bursts open at your touch and there is oh wait I've seen bolts. this music video it's meatloaf right <laughs> <laughs> please stop <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, and uh, the spirit balls form into one image which is the image of a floating woman in the air she is somewhat incorporeal see through but she looks like their wind is blowing through her hair and tussling her skirt she is hovering above the air and looking directly at all of each and every one of you it is a meatloaf music video <laughs> hey Birino, would you do anything for love <laughs> this, but he won't do that th yeah it's all coming back to me now <laughs> <laughs> It's just too Yay. easy. <laughs> Way too easy. Oh me, oh my, I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> Way too easy? That's not a meatloaf song. Yeah, it hey, is. Hey, our first sea shanty. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. <laughs> I mean, so we're, we're all three here, or we're gonna get like a bat out of hell and run. <laughs> uh, she just stares at you. What do you do? Who are you? And what do you want? Um... She turns and uh, points uh, out into the horizon. It is midnight, at least like deep in the night at this point. There's no light coming from the there, um, but you do see a cluster of stars in that direction. And she just points. You want us to go there? And she looks at you like she just heard like someone just call her name and then she vanishes I do believe these rock and roll dreams have come true <laughs> <laughs> alright the story she pointed out is that a constellation that has this name by any chance uh, do a nature check would any of us have kind of recognized it from where we're supposed to be going? Perhaps. Uh, I would say that's a something along the lines of tracking or whatever the thing of that is, any kind of cartography or like knowledge nature or something like that. So everybody do a nature check or whatever? I'd say, yeah. Let's see what everyone's got. Her hair was, is she still there? Uh, she uh, disappeared. No, she's gone. She disappeared. Because she looked like she was. Like someone this looked like someone like when Claire spoke. She looks like she turned as if Claire just called her name and she disappeared. Like you know, when someone just calls you and you're like, huh, and then goes. Oh, so she pulled a Princess Leia and disappeared. Okay. Yeah, but instead of repeating the message over and over again, she disappeared. All right. So I got thirteen on the knowledge check. Ooh, what are we doing? Nature? <laughs> uh, yes, knowledge nature or nature chat. Yeah, this is gonna be terrible. <clears throat> Sorry, um, Bethany, you got thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. She pointed to the sky, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Heaven can wait. I'm um, <laughs> Somewhere on um, here. Birno, you do recognize that it's a cluster of stars. That is a constellation, but you're not too sure what it is. Uh, Steve, you do know that yep. it's a. Uh, you do know that it is a cluster of stars as a constellation. Uh, the constellation, uh, and I'm just making this up. It's not any kind of real constellation. Um, is a very very old one. It has a very old story to it and a very ancient name that you're not too sure the name of. 
Um, but usually when that is seen, sailors take it as a sign of ill waters ahead. Sort of like... I would know that. I'm sort of like thinking. pinks... Eh. We don't know exactly what it is. You just know it's a con... Mike, you rolled a one. <laughs> she pointed to the sky. <laughs> I'm going with what y'all rolled here. Beer beat. For sure. Yeah, similar to like the war like you know, pink sky in the morning, sailor take warning, and it's when that shows up on the horizon, any horizon. Beware. And when Steve gets back, I'll just make sure he shares it with y'all. <laughs> so as I was uh, saying there, Steve, if you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Um the symbol of that um of that cluster of stars that constellation is similar to like you know pink sky in the morning sailor take warning mm -hmm. there are ill tides ahead with the party? yeah do you share this with the party yes there are... and that is where we leave it ladies and gentlemen there are meatloaf tides ahead <laughs> and that is the end of our game for this session unfortunately beer no does have to go but hopefully we'll start a little bit earlier and a little bit um uh, maybe with a kelly next week as well and maybe actually our first special guest who knows <laughs> um you're gonna have to take our come and take a look next week uh all right round table of where we can find you guys uh if not we can just say hey thanks for coming thanks for playing this is my this is me this is the character i play if y'all got that uh steve let's start with you uh, I'm Steve. I'm generally the storyteller here at Vancouver by Night. Uh, we do stuff Sunday, or sorry, Saturdays, uh, 6 p.m. on this channel. We start off on the Level Up Dice channel at 3 p.m. Uh, PST, and uh, we do the thing here Wednesdays. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of other stuff. On the 30th, we're doing a thing for uh, No Kid Hungry, uh, which is our No Kid Kindred Hungry Sabbat game. Uh, Tuesday. We're, yeah, we're going to be doing um, uh, Shane Easton's going to be storytelling it and then there's a bunch of other shit that's going to go on. What? Sorry, what happens on Tuesday? Tuesday. Call of you best. Oh. You can talk about that one. Yeah, you can talk about that one. Okay. Um, we're just going to get Aaron just to do his uh, outro just so we can get him going on the way. <laughs> Aaron, want to uh, send us off? Uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, I, I'm not on any other one so it's it's really just here but uh it was fun playing with you guys tonight uh i've been on everyone but bye see you later awesome uh mike go ahead uh, uh, hi uh mike you can catch me uh, and my cosplaying adventures at uh on twitter and instagram at at uh, canadian captain america uh, I play the occasional game at the Vancouver by night on Saturday nights. I will be playing in this game on Wednesdays, and both uh, Steve and myself are in a game uh, on Tuesdays, Call of the Abyss, along with uh, a couple of other fairly prominent uh, vampire role players. On the Uber and Lords I'm channel. trying to think. Am I missing one? <laughs> I think I'm good. That's it for me. Um, yeah. And Bethany, take us out of here. <laughs> well, this was definitely fun. <laughs> a lot more character reveal than what I was expecting for game one. Um, I'm a cosplayer, so if you wish to follow or check out my socials, uh, you can find me at Dark Ninja Raven on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, otherwise, just watch for me here on Wednesdays. And I am your storyteller for today, uh, Rose, also your lawful cute one. Uh, you can catch me on Saturdays uh, as Trash Panda in Vancouver by night. Uh, those links in the socials will be there. You can also catch me on Instagram and Twitter at Rose underscore Bulbasaur. <laughs> I don't think she likes that. <laughs> How about TikTok? Rose Bulbasaur without the underscore. Poor kitty. And yeah, those are my socials for today. I guess we'll see you next week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we're going to raid uh, Dork Tales after this. Woo! Cool. And before we head off screen, let's all give one hearty arg, and I'm going to make this a thing. All right, three, two, one.
Arr. Arr.